Hey guys, welcome to another card video. You're watching On The Craft Table. I'm Marielle and today we'll be making a Christmas card using the Mama Elephant Jingle All The Way stamp and coordinating die set. I will be releasing another video that won't necessarily be a part two to this one, but because the same stamps, techniques, paper, and sentiments were used in it, I guess you can say it is somewhat of an extension to this one, which I know you guys will enjoy also. So without further ado, let's get into our card. This stamp set was so fun to play with and to color. I know that I will be pulling this one out every holiday season. While I was stamping these cuties onto my Nina Desert Storm, I had the urge to really pull out my colored pencils, but I had something else in mind for this card with my Copics, so that's something I'll definitely try in the future. So I have a five by seven pre-cut Nina Desert Storm piece of cardstock, and today I'm gonna be using my Distress Permanent Mixed Media Ink Palette. I'll only be using one color, and that is the Vintage Photo. And that's that light brown one you see there in the corner. So now we're gonna make our background using our stamps of our reindeer. And all I'm going to do is take my acrylic block, put my stamp on it, ink it up with my vintage photo, and I'm just going to repeat stamp all over the background using mostly all of my stamps. Because it's pretty simple and pretty much self-explanatory, I'm going to fast forward this part, put a little bit of music on, and let you guys enjoy the multi-stamping. stamping and as you can see there's a few small parts where the ink didn't quite pick up because I wasn't using my misty I couldn't double stamp without running the risk of you know double stamping and it not lining up quite perfectly so I'm gonna take my Cricut metallic marker and this is the closest marker that I had to the uh, ink color that I was using. So I'm just gonna fill in those small little spots that um, the ink didn't quite pick up. And it probably wouldn't be noticeable to the naked eye, but because I'm actually making the card and I can see it, you know, it's those little things that bother me. So I just like to fix it if I can fix it. So now that that's all done, I'm going to move on to stamping my little reindeer for my Copic coloring. So I'm going to be using my Misty for this just because I want to be able to double stamp if I need to. But you don't have to use your Misty. You can use an acrylic block. Because I am using my Copic markers today and they are an alcohol ink, I will be using my Black Memento ink. Uh, ink pad because it works very well with Copic markers and any kind of alcohol ink uh, marker that you have and uh, it doesn't smudge and it dries very quickly. So I'm basically just lining up my stamps and I'm using the Nina Sola Crest 100 pound card stock. It's not, it doesn't have to be any particular size and the stamps don't have to be in any particular order because I will be cutting it out with the dies that the stamp set came with and putting those on my card. So I'm just inking up my stamps really well, stamping that down, and then I'll just move right on to my Copic coloring. So it took me about 40 minutes to color these little guys in, but it was definitely worth it because the card came out gorgeous. 
I chose not to display each color used because I ended up using a lot of colors, but I will be making weekly Copic coloring videos solely focused on Copic coloring. And in those videos, I will always give a detailed description of my techniques and colors used. So I'll just put on a little music and speed up this portion of the video. done I pulled out my Sizzix Big Kick which is the same as the Big Shot the only difference is that one is sold online and in smaller shops and the other one is sold in big box stores like Michaels, AC Moore and Hobby Lobby. I'm carefully lining up my uh, dies with my images and cutting them out and getting them ready for my card and once that is done I can put those images aside and start working on my background and my card base. Aren't these little guys just so cute? I know that this stamp set is pretty old, but I don't think it'll ever get old to me. So I pulled out a 12 by 12 American Crafts red glitter cardstock, and I'm cutting a small piece out. The piece measured about two and a half inches by five inches, enough to reach the width of my background, but because I felt it was a little too high in length, I ended up cutting a half an inch off, so the size ended up being two inches by five inches for this red glitter cardstock. Next, I'm taking my background that I did all that multi-stamping on earlier, and I'm gonna cut about a half an inch off the top and a half an inch off the sides because I do wanna take another piece of cardstock and create a border around it. I'll be using Nina Environment Grocer Craft in 65 pound cardstock for my border, so I wanna cut it down to five by seven. Although I usually buy my Nina paper on Amazon or Simon Says Stamp, I ended up finding a 50 pack of this stuff at my local Target. Once I have my border cardstock cut down, I'm gonna take my background and just place that on top to make sure my sizing is just right. I usually use my ATG gun for adhering backgrounds, but this time I decided to pull out my nine inch Xyron Creative Station. This bad boy is awesome. You can make stickers, magnets, and laminated stickers. And the awesome part about it is that you can buy the cartridges in five inch or nine inch, and they both work perfect with this one here. Now that I turned my background into a permanent sticker, I'm gonna take my Teflon bone folder and make sure that the stickiness is adhered onto my background all the way. You don't have to have a Teflon bone folder, but I will say that once you get one, you'll never use a regular bone folder again. Now I'll take my background and stick that down onto my border piece. I grab my glue eraser just to get rid of any stickiness that might have come around the edges. It's time to put our card onto a base. I buy pre-cut, pre-scored cardstock in bulk just to make it easier, but of course you can just cut a piece at 10 by 7, then score it at 5 inches down the middle. Just as before, I'm running my piece through my Xyron to turn it into a permanent sticker, and I'll be adhering this piece onto my base. I did end up putting it on a little crooked, but I just fixed it by shifting my card base over a tiny bit, just using my fingers. Now it's time to bring in that red glitter piece we cut earlier, and I'm just gonna adhere that onto my card using my ATG gun. Next, I got my little guys all lined up and ready to be put on our card using some foam dots. 
I knew I wanted to use every one of the images, so I just put them on the way I thought they'd look best, and I think it came out pretty good. Considering the fact that I had absolutely no clue how I would put them on until the moment that I actually put them on. If you ever have a hard time putting these on straight, try using a pair of tweezers and it might help. Now we're ready for our sentiment and I decided to use the Simon Says Stamp Believe die and stamp set for this card. And the great part about this stamp set is that it can be used for Christmas, encouragement, Valentine's, or a thank you card. But because we're making a Christmas card, of course, we'll be using the sentiment that reads, Believe in the Magic of Christmas. So because I never used this die set before, it's still connected. So I'm going to take my cutters and cut the little steel bars that connect the sentiment in the middle and just disconnect them so that I could use them. Once you disconnect them, sometimes you'll notice that there's little points still on it, you want to definitely cut those points off. And I notice that sometimes you can't totally take it off. So what you can do is just grab a nail filer and just file it down, or you can grab a sander and just file it down because you can definitely cut yourself. And once you cut those off, make sure you grab a baby wipe or just a wet paper towel and just swipe your uh, work area and make sure that you pick those little pieces up because you wouldn't want to get stuck with one of those. Especially if you have little ones like I do. I have a two-year-old daughter named Giovanna and a five-year-old son named Nico and they love coming into my craft room and they love messing with everything. So I would hate for one of them to get hurt with one of these things. So I'm going to take a red piece of glitter cardstock and cut out the background piece to my Believe die set. Then I'll take a piece of that Nina Grosser Craft and I'll cut out the Believe Word die. I'm taking my Tonic Studio mini paper trimmer and cutting out a sentiment strip. I didn't measure it, but I'd say it was about three quarters of an inch. Next, I'm taking my In the Magic of Christmas stamp and putting that onto an acrylic block. So we're going to be doing some heat embossing and because of that I'm taking my EK Success anti-static powder and putting that all over my sentiment strips. I do have two sentiment strips because I didn't know if I wanted to use the red tinsel emb embossing powder or the gold tinsel embossing powder but I did end up going with the gold. The reason why we're using the anti-static powder is because embossing powder is very clingy and it stops the embossing powder from sticking to the cardstock except for where you stamp down with the Versamark ink. So I'm going to ink up my stamp really good, stamp that down onto my sentiment strip, then I'm going to take my embossing powder with my coffee filter underneath and just pour that onto my sentiment strip. The coffee filters are great for preventing mess and folding them in half and pouring the excess powder back into your bottle. Next, I'm gonna take my heat tool and heat up that embossing powder until it's nice and melted. If you let the heat tool heat up for about a minute before you start using it, it'd definitely prevent your paper from warping so much and it'd melt the embossing powder a lot quicker. Using my Ranger Multimedia Mac glue, I'm adhering that Believe Word die we cut out to the shadow background piece we cut out with the red glitter card stock. I like to use tweezers to manipulate the piece and because we used glue, it makes it very easy to move it around. So I decided to cut my sentiment strip down just a little bit and I didn't really measure it. I kind of just winged it. I just cut it down to where I felt like it would look good on my card. So I put some foam dots on the back of my Believe Word die cut and I'm just going to adhere that in the middle of my card. Next I'm taking some Doris foam, foam strips and these foam strips are amazing because they're really tiny. You can cut them and they're awesome for sentiment strips. I'm going to take two of these foam strips and put them on the back of my sentiment strip. Then I'll just line that up on the right side of my card and I'll push it down so that it sticks very well. 
To finish off my card, I'm taking three red jewels and gluing that onto the top right of my card in a slanted triangle position. I'm using my Marvi Uchida Jewel Picker to pick them up and my Multimedia Mac Glue to glue them on. So that completes our first Reindeer Games Christmas card. If you're interested in a super easy envelope design, stick around to the end of this video. super simple, easy envelope design. I'm using one 5x7 craft envelope and my Simon Says Stamp envelope addressing stencil or if you don't have it, you can use a ruler. I am only using one part of this uh, stencil and that would be the outside part of it. So I'm just going to line that up around the middle and I'm going to tape that down so that I can trace the inside of the rectangle with a pencil. And once that's done, I'll just remove it. Now I'm going to take my T-ruler and measure the rectangle. And I'm going to take my post-it labeling tape. And I'm going to cut a piece of post-it tape the size of my rectangle so that I can mask it off. Once I have my post-it tape cut down to the proper size, I'm going to stick that onto my rectangle that I traced out earlier. Now I'm going to take my Distress Permanent Mixed Media Ink Palette using Vintage Photo Only along with my Mama Elephant Reindeer Stamps and I'm just going to stamp all over my uh, envelope exactly how I did with the background of my card. And I'm just going to go crazy and stamp all over this envelope using almost every single stamp. The method you want to use for doing this multi-stamping is just spreading out the stamps first and then taking the smaller stamps and filling in all the gaps. Now that my stamping is done, before I remove the mask, I'm going to take my Distress Oxide and Vintage Photo along with my ink blending tool and ink it up. I'm going to be dabbing off most of the ink because I want a subtle shadow. Then I'll blend between my mask and my envelope. You won't see it well now, but you will once I remove the mask. Once the blending's complete, you're going to grab your tweezers and remove the mask gently. Next, I'm taking my ruler and my size 10 white jelly roll pen, and I'm just creating lines down the sides of the rectangle. I didn't measure the lines, I kind of just went for it and tried to make it as even as possible. I'm just making lines on each side of the rectangle as kind of like a border. If you want, you could make dots, you could make squiggly lines, you could even make stripes, but I chose to just make straight lines. So that completes our envelope and now we have a super cute card and a super cute envelope to match. If you're interested in more videos like this, don't forget to like and subscribe and please leave a comment and let me know what you guys think. If you guys do recreate this card, my social media links will be down in the description and I would love to see them. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.